Hey guys, it's Max here and welcome to part 3 of our Kato series. So in this tutorial we want to continue on the post request and add dynamic parameters to the request. But before we start, um, I want to go to my Kato tutorial repository, which is on GitHub, where you can find the source code for every episode as a branch. So, so for example, um, the code for this episode will be at branch episode three. And you can also find an article on Medium where I explain um, in text what we do in this tutorial. So links to Medium and GitHub will be down in the description. So check it out. Okay, guys, that's what we want to build in this tutorial. And we want to add parameters. So for example, param1 with value1 and param2 with value2 to our curl request, um, which you should know from the second tutorial. And in our output text, we want to see this is a test post request with parameter values value 1 and value 2. When we change param1 with value 1 to test um, in the output, there should be test instead of value 1. So let's go to IntelliJ and start coding. Okay, back in IntelliJ, we have to create a new post route. So we type in post, specify the path of the route. Um, in this case, it's test2, but you can name it um, whatever you want. And as a body, we call call.respond text again and say um, this is a test post request with parameter so how do we name it parameter um, values yeah one and two okay these two um, words are yeah, parameters. So let's create uh, variables for this. We do this with val um, param value one equals one and param value two equals two. And now we can add these two two variables with string interpolation. So we type a dollar and then param value one and param value two. Okay, so now they are static, but we want that we can specify the parameters. Um, yeah, that we can specify them dynamically. And we do that by by taking the parameters into a vari variable parameters call dot receive parameters. Now we have a typo here. Parameters. Okay. And in that parameters object, we can call the get method, or um, we can use this notation to specify a parameter name and get as a return value, the parameter value. Okay, so we copy this code and instead of saying one as a literal string, we call parameters and the parameter name we want to specify is param1. And the same we do with parameter value two. We say parameters param two. Okay, let's shortly compare that um, with our medium posts. So here we say that are the two parameters we give to the requests. 
and here you can see the parameter name param1 as well as here and the same with param2 so this is the parameter name and this is the parameter value and the parameter values are now in this variable okay so that's all now we can run our application okay down in the console we can see that there is already a server running or no that's bad let's stop it and do it again <laughs> so yeah here is our server on port 8081 so um, we go to our terminal and now we do our curl so curl minus x post so we want to do a post request not a get request this is a type of the request then with minus f we can specify one parameter um, we do that with content type uh, form data so it would be the same as filling out a form on a website and posting it yeah to another resource um, so the first parameter is param1 with the value value1 and we can add as many minus f's as we want in our case we want two parameters so we add another minus f param2 with value2 and we post that to http colon double slash localhost on port 8081 at resource test2 okay let's execute that and now we can see that we get the output this is a post request with parameter values value 1 and value 2 okay now the master question what will happen when we leave param 2 away so um, we remove that okay what will happen now so the solution is quite simple so let's execute that and we can see that instead of value 2 there is now a null so when we look in the code again we um, we can see here we are accessing param2 and if that is not set we get null in this variable and null to string is null yeah as a string when we don't want null here so we want a default value we can use the elvis operator okay say elvis operator and for example default and now whenever we don't specify parameter 2 we will have the term default in the variable param value 2 so there should never be null here okay let's restart and test our changes okay server is running go back to our terminal and execute the curl again and now we see that instead of null we get a default so our default logic is now working okay thanks for watching this video i hope you like it um this video series will be out every week on monday so next monday there will be the next episode where we will talk about json and how we can receive and set json so that will be a very interesting topic i hope you look forward to it and i hope you liked the video please leave a like and a comment and yeah i will see you next week Bye.